Lessons in Mathematics and Theological Philosophy Part 1 Absolute Infinity Absolute Infinity is a term coined by the German mathematician Kunter, the man who is a prominent figure in the foundation of modern day set theory, having coined the term in 8083. Absolute Infinity is not a term that's only applicable to mathematics, but it's in fact a term coined by various religious and theological philosophies, such as Ansoff from Kabbalah, a god endorsing negative theology, being indescribable and coined to be infinite, that which is unlimited having no restriction, and having absolutely no limits to its infinity. The ideal notion of infinity to a non-mathematician, and Tao or Tao of the Taoists, a god that's both one, wholeness, everything, having found data Teiji, and like the Taoists say, from the one came Teiji, came yin and yang, that which then came 10,000 things. While Tao being everything in creation, being everywhere in everything referred to as a whole, its other truly divine aspect is completely nothing, with nothingness being more or less of its true essence. It embodies the ideology of a pure being in ontology, pure nothingness, leads it to be completely indescribable without name, lacking completely everything in a physical sense, in conceptual sense, and essence. It is also going to be infinite, without end, an infinity that cannot be described as the Taoist says. An infinity that cannot be described as by the Taoist views. Describing infinity is making it definite and as transfinite infinity's function. Hence, it isn't regarded as true infinity by the Taoists, but they regard true infinity as completely ineffable, indescribable, which is in direct correspondence with Kant's views of absolute infinity. Now, before one gets to be educated by the teachings of absolute infinity, it is imperative for one to learn what transfinite infinities are, as they are in direct contrast with absolute infinity. The term transfinite infinity, again, was also coined by the German mathematician Kantur as well. It's easy to see how much of an important role he played in the foundation of modern day set theory. Transfinite infinities are infinities that simply go beyond finite magnitude. As an example, a set of natural numbers, one can tell counting from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and continuing on, one can count endlessly and to infinity, counting over, over, and over again. Hence, to demonstrate the set of natural numbers as a completed infinity, we simply implement the symbol n, which denotes for the complete set of all natural numbers, which can expand infinitely. This set is referred to as the cardinality of Aleph Null, the first count of the infinity. These transfinite infinities get bigger and bigger and bigger, with a set of real numbers on the other hand being akin to something like this and being the first uncountably infinity Aleph 1, strictly superior to the countably infinity Aleph null, in which there, from there we have Aleph 2, 3, and this carries on infinitely to Aleph Omega. Beyond all of these comes the large cardinals, cardinals beyond the reaches of small infinite cardinals, like every extension of Alephs, with the first prominent one if we exclude the worldly cardinal. The term inaccessible stemming from being beyond the reaches of Alephs along with their arithmetic operations like power setting. In Lehmann's terms, one cannot reach the inaccessible cardinal by power setting Alephs, in which the process of power setting is the basis for construction of greater Alephs, from which if we power set something like a comes a to the power of 2, or a to the power of a, if we denote a to be Aleph null, we get Aleph 1, or better yet, if we have the cardinal x and we denote it for Aleph null, if we power set the cardinal, we receive a cardinal x to the power of 2 or x to the power of x, which would be denoted for as aleph 1. This works for every aleph, but such arithmetic operations cannot be used to reach the inaccessible cardinal again. In a sense, the inaccessible cardinal is completely unreachable to any extension of alephs, and power setting these alephs is not enough to reach it. With the inaccessible cardinal axiom, which both asserts the existence of the inaccessible cardinals and satisfies the existence of a tower of inaccessible cardinals, allows us to conjure cardinals beyond the baseline inaccessible cardinal, like hyper-inaccessible cardinals and hyper-hyper-inaccessible cardinals, 
From these hyper inaccessible kernel sets comes the Marwa kernel. With these hyper inaccessible kernels strictly being inferior to the Marwa kernel, which the Marwa kernel is a term coined by the mathematician Marlow or Paul Marlow. The cardinal works as such. It is cardinal K which contains stationary sets of the inaccessible cardinal below it. In layman's terms, sets of inaccessibles are stationary in K, which is roughly how the inaccessible cardinal perceives Alice themselves. Reaching beyond the cardinals that come as such as the Marlow cardinal, we go into cardinals that require the transitive method that will be used for us to construct these cardinals. An example of such would be the measurable cardinal, which employs the elementary embedding of V in M, such that K is the critical point of J. Measurable cardinals are the boundary between small large cardinals like inaccessible cardinals and large large cardinals like super compact cardinals, and are actually the KF inaccessible cardinal. Or, in other words, there are k inaccessible cardinals smaller than k, and the latter k being the measurable cardinal. In layman's terms, there are k inaccessible cardinals smaller than the measurable cardinal. Even supercompact cardinals utilize the transitive method with its elementary embedding, in which the supercompact cardinal is the kth measurable cardinal. Even the largest known cardinals that are consistent with CFC, like ranking to rank, utilize this. All of these transfinite cardinals fall under transfinite infinity, in which they are all properties of universe V, or von Neumann's universe, which is a class containing all sets of large cardinals and small infinite cardinals, which are to be formalized by ZFC. Now, this is where absolute infinity comes in. Cantor argued absolute infinity to be a collection of all infinities in universe V. He believed that every infinity, even the ones that haven't been formalized, are mere subsets of infinity, which is a collection of all infinities in V. This led to him holding the belief that the absolute infinity is ineffable and indescribable and can only be described through negative terms in relation to the universe V. As the universe V is a collection of every known and unknown cardinal with the reflection principle, it states that the properties of large cardinals are reflected down to lower cardinals and attests for the fact that if absolute infinity is indeed a collection of those infinity, we can't directly map it to infinity x for example. For example, definitively and provide axioms and theorems asserting its existence without presupposing that if it's not the part of universe V or if it's actually the part of universe V because universe V is something that's very very massive so we cannot tell if we say something is infinity x and provide theorems and axioms for its existence we are talking about something that's a collection of all in universe x or if it's just a property of universe x there's at least one large cardinal right by the reflection principles which satisfies those theorems and axioms. Hence, absolute infinity wouldn't be the largest but a property of V if we actually give it a definitive meaning and provide theorems and axioms for it. Hence, you cannot describe absolute infinity as anything outside of being a collection of everything in V. It is as they say, anytime we try to capture the universe from what we positively possess or can express, we fail the task as such a characterization can be provided for other large cardinals or other large cardinals satisfy that characterization. Hence, we can never reach the absolute with any infinity and we cannot adequately provide any description of it at all within relation to universe V. We describe it as something without limits. That'll be all. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more educational videos in the future.